Hey everyone, today a little bit of a different video than usual, but still an adventure. I decided during my time in La Palma to finally make one of my biggest life dreams come true and to learn how to dive and make the first diving certification, the open water diver. And for me, this is a complete new environment and a complete new yeah, step out of my comfort zone, being underwater, learning how to breathe underwater and discovering the marine life. And for me, it was like, as I said, one of the biggest life dreams and I'm super excited sharing all this with you, taking you with me, showing you how the course went, how it is to be underwater, what are sort of the dangers, but also what are the excitements and of course also the fears that can happen. I hope this video also helps you if you want to become an open diver or if you simply are interested in diving. But also if not, I hope it's still entertaining for you and you take some stuff away. If you do, please give a thumbs up and if you want to support me and my channel, you can simply subscribe so you also don't miss out new adventures but also with the small gesture you can really support me. Anyways, let's get to it and let's start me first with what is actually diving. The fascination for the deep blue and the desire to discover marine life is probably as old as humankind. The oldest form of diving is with simply holding your breath while being underwater. We refer to them as free divers. Experienced and trained free divers can hold their breath more than 10 minutes. The record although is for 24 minutes and 37 seconds. The record for a maximum depth with a single breath is by 214 meters. Besides free diving humans also tried different methods to be able to breathe underwater and actually only in the last few decades underwater breathing apparatus were invented divers with this kind of equipment are referred to as scuba divers scuba standing for self-contained underwater breathing apparatus after intense research from the militaries during world war ii as well as constant improvements you can see the divers as of today typical with the tanks on the back since the end of the last century recreational so hobby diving is becoming more and more more popular. First things first, in case I say anything wrong, please don't judge me. I'm completely new in this field and far away from being a professional. The opposite, I would say I'm pretty still a noob diver. So if I say something wrong, put a comment down, let me know, I'm more than happy to learn. Anyways, um, from my research, what I found out is there are two big diving associations, there's PADI and SSI. What I found out is they're pretty much the same. They teach more or less the same and the certifications are more or less the same and also they recognize each other's certification. I made my diving course with SSI. Why? Because the diving school that I wanted to make the course with was SSI and I didn't see any advantages or disadvantages. But just to be on the same page in the rest of the video, I will refer to the terminology that I learned, so the SSI terminology. The certification I did is the open water diver. I tell you at the end of the video if I actually managed to get it or not. But uh, this certification is the second lowest certification. But it allows you to dive almost everywhere and it allows you to dive to a depth up to 18 meters. That's the maximum you can go down. And if you are like me, maybe climbing mountains regularly or go climbing, where you can easily make in one afternoon 4,000 meters elevation, then 18 meters sounds absolutely like nothing. That's exactly what I thought as I started making the course. But then you're the first time in the sea, the first time going down to five meters maybe, and then finally going to 18 meters, then you realize actually that in diving, 80 meters means a lot. In order to get the open water diver certification, you need to make at least six dive. Usually some of them are made in the pool and some of them in the open water. In my case, I did all of them in the open water, actually in the mighty Atlantic Ocean, directly in front of La Palma, which was great for me. In all these dives, you are actually not only admiring the marine life and getting closer to the ocean floor, you actually learn how to breathe underwater, how to use your equipment underwater and get a feeling for, yeah, simply for being underwater and for diving. And as open water diver, in order to get the certification, you need to go at least one time down to 18 meters and you go dive by dive always a little bit more down and of course not only go down but also make exercises emergency procedures learning how to change or switch equipment also you learn how to dive with a buddy uh, because a diver is never alone always diving with a second person which is your dive buddy and you basically do this in order to reduce risks for example if you run out of air you have a second person next to you where you can then share air and also 
ascend together in case of emergencies. Additional to all these practices and, and um, practice tests that you need to do, you also have a theoretical part where you learn how to avoid certain risks like ascending too fast, how to plan a dive. And at the end of all these dives and the end of this theoretical part, you have a big exam where you prove then if you understood everything and if you're actually able to dive. Actually, since I'm a little boy, I always was dreaming of discovering the ocean, being below the surface and swimming with the fishes. I guess I got the interest from my dad because yeah, he's super fascinated in the marine life, everything related to the oceans from fishes to corals and I guess that's somehow how I picked it up. But for some reason it never was me to happen. I never decided to, okay, now it's the time, now I make a diving course and learn how to dive. Until I was in the Canary Islands, I decided quite spontaneous to now really sign up to a diving course. I guess it's somehow related that I'm on an island and constantly surrounded by the ocean. But anyways, long story short, I was leaving La Gomera and the next place where the next island where I was heading to was La Palma and I knew already that La Palma is actually quite great for diving. So I decided very spontaneous, I find a diving school, that's how I found punkfish diving and sign up and learn how to dive. The whole course in March, which is pretty much off season for the Canary Islands. And I did it together with my friend. Uh, he was then also basing my dive party. We had a main instructor, Alberto, and two assistant instructors, Laura and Jens. And I don't know if this is because it was off season, but it was really great to have this personal experience because it was just, yeah, us two and the instructors, which allowed me to not only ask a lot of questions, but also to make all the exercises one-on-one -on -one with one instructor, which helped a lot. But also it gave me the possibility to film everything and to take you with me. And um, on this note, also a big thanks to Laura and Jens for being not only super patient, but also helping me filming, especially underwater, which is a bit of new filming for me. Also a big thanks to the rest of the Punkfish crew. It was a really, really great experience and it not only felt making my certification but also making some new friends. I will also link them down in the description if you're in the Canary Islands and you're interested in learning diving, really check them out. I don't get paid for it for saying this, um, I paid the normal full price but I had really a great experience and I can really recommend it to you. Finally I arrived in La Palma and my Airbnb was in the capital in Santa Cruz and Punkfish is actually in the south of the island and I think nothing felt more long than this one hour bus ride in the morning. You're full of emotions, it's also quite mixed feeling from being super excited to a bit anxious and nervous but anyways I arrived and as soon as I arrived um, we made all the paperwork of course and then started to collect our equipment I don't have any diving gear so I had to rent everything let's maybe look first what equipment a diver needs as I said before diving is a complete new world for me I snorkeled before and would say for myself I'm a pretty good swimmer but I never actually dived before so the equipment was also completely new to me as equipment you have first of all a wetsuit more advanced divers can then also have a dry suit but let's keep it simple for now the wetsuit has different types and different thicknesses depending on the water temperature that you're diving in. Of course as a diver you also have a mask allowing you to actually see underwater. And then you wear a sort of special jacket that is also holding the tanks. In my case just one 12 liter bottle filled with compressed oxygen. This vest that you're wearing is not only holding the tank it's also directly connected to the tank allowing you to inflate or deflate it and it's actually called BCD. To not sink when you're actually on the surface you just inflate the vest and then you basically swim on top. If you want to go down you deflate the west and also if you are under the water in order to find the right balance and the right buoyancy you use the BCD. In the water are different gravity rules basically because of the weightless conditions you are simply flying. With the BCD which stands actually for buoyancy control device you can release some air which makes you sink or you fill it and it makes you ascend. So eventually in order to have the perfect buoyancy underwater you need to master the BCD which is probably one of the biggest challenges but later I tell you more about this. Of course as a diver you also need fins and something that allows you to breathe underwater. For this you have the regulators. The first stage is connected to the tank and the second stage is in your mouth ensuring you can actually breathe. Additionally you have a backup system that is called octopus. Why octopus? Because it looks like an octopus. And this allows you to have a second regulator if your primary is broken. And it also allows you to share air with your dive body. Only because of the neoprene suit you actually would float on the water surface. And because of this but also because of the 
the buoyancy force of the BCD in the tank, a stiver UV belt with weights. This weight belt makes you heavier and actually makes you sink. The better you become with buoyancy as a diver, the less weight your ammunition need. I had to dive with 7 kilos. Good, the last piece is a dive computer. With this you can measure your depth but also calculate your safety stop. As a diver you do the safety stop doing the ascent back to the surface. Depending on your dive depth and the duration of your dive, this stop helps your body to reduce the nitrogen in your blood. Too much nitrogen would lead to a decompression sickness. But let's keep it really basic here. And the last equipment that you have is a pressure gauge that shows you how much oxygen you have left in your tank. Depending on the diver you can also have different or additional equipment. I for myself rented all of the equipment because of course I don't have anything yet. But let's speak about the first Next dive. We got all the equipment and all together in some pretty cool jeeps we drove to the dive site. And I had this mental image in my head that a diver always jumps from a helicopter in the water or jumps from a boat in the water. But I was certain that I would not become the next Rumbo, so I didn't expect a helicopter, but I expected a boat. But very soon I learned there's another way for a diver to enter the water, which is on the shore with a simple swim. And this is basically the way how I will make almost all my dive, or actually all the dives in my certification. Anyways, uh, so we arrived at the dive site, we took everything out of the car, put it next to the shore, and then we started to learn about the equipment. What is what, how does it fit together, how does it work and how can you use it. Finally, we went and entered our wetsuits, put on the DCT, which is the jacket with the tank on top, and headed for the water. And at the beginning we were just floating, getting used to the regulator, getting used to the equipment and also taking some breaths underwater simply to get used and after a few minutes my instructor asked me then if I'm ready to go down and to dive and at the beginning I had of course big problems with buoyancy, um, releasing the pressure of my ear and so on and at the surface I actually thought as soon as I go down I would feel stressed or anxious or nervous simply by the thought that you're breathing through a machine and that you're in the deep blue but it was exactly the opposite. As soon as I went down, I felt like really relaxed and really calm. It was like entering a different world. The only thing you really hear is your own breath and it feels like a fairy tale because everything is blue. Anyways, I don't know how deep we went, I think three, five meters, not more, but it was perfect for me getting used to it. And at this moment, I knew that I will love diving. And as soon as I went down, I already saw the first fish and later there I knew that I love diving and I will do this for a long time. My instructor and I at the beginning were just diving in the shallow water, three, five meters, simply to get used to it. But we were diving around some stones and some rocks. And between there I saw all sorts of marine life, from trumpet fish to puffy fish, to sea stars and, and all sorts of colorful fishes. After some time my tank started to become empty and we started to call it a day going out of the water. Especially as a beginner diver you breathe a lot because you're not used to it and you consume the oxygen in your tank pretty fast. In my case it was around 30 minutes and the tank was already empty. As soon as we were back on the surface we made a deep breathing. Eventually we made this after every dive but especially after this dive, our instructors ask us to sleep at night over everything to decide basically do we really want to continue with the dive and if we really want to do this. Eventually, while we were speaking in a debriefing, I knew already that I definitely want to continue and I couldn't actually wait to dive again and uh, actually I wanted to make nothing else and taking the tank and uh, taking a new tank and going back in the water and diving again. I'm really amazed by this feeling that you get underwater. Everything slows down and everything feels really calm. You leave all the stress and the problems on the surface. The only thing that you're really focusing on is your breath, slowly breathing in and slowly breathing out. And then you focus on the world around you, the marine life, focusing on this amazing new world that you just discovered. And even now, I can't wait to have this feeling again. One week later, it was time for our second diving day. During that day, it was planned to have two different dives, mostly educational, practicing different skills, but also a bit of recreational diving. During the first dive, we had to practice some very important skills, managing to switch the air artillery components from primary to secondary, but also practicing with our dive body, sharing air. 
of course, both receiving the air, but also giving the air to our dive body. During the second dive, we had some other important skills, basically mastering and getting used to the equipment, disassembling everything and putting everything together again, both on the surface, but also in the water. We started quite easy, first removing the mask and then removing the weight belt and eventually the whole BCD. For me, it was quite challenging underwater, removing and putting the BCD back on, but eventually I also managed to do that. During the breaks between the dives, we used the time to also learn and to have academic sessions, basically to learn about the science behind diving, how to plan a dive and also emergency procedures, and of course plan the upcoming dives. During that day, I think Poseidon was a little bit upset because it felt like being in a washing machine due to the waves in the water. The next day, the waves were even more strong. During that day, it was planned to train emergency ascents. Usually, if you plan your dive correctly, you should never run out of air, but it was important to practice it in case it happens. The usual procedure is to share air with your dive body and ascend control together. In case your dive body is distracted by a fish or too far away, you have also the possibility to make an emergency ascent alone. This we practiced first in the shallow water and then also in the more deep water. I think it is really important to practice these exercises over and over again, simply to get a routine, but also to get confidence, confidence into your abilities, but also into your equipment. During one of the last ascents, at the end of the ascents, Alberto disconnected my BCD from the tank, so we train how to inflate the BCD just with our lungs. And this was quite unexpected and sort of an emergency, real life emergency situation. I knew that nothing can happen because the team is there to make sure that nothing happens, but it was still a bit of a panic. And I ended up swallowing quite some salt water. At the end of each dive, uh, we had a couple of minutes, 10, 15 minutes, for just fun diving, discovering the marine life and also going always a little bit deeper in the water. During the last dive, I managed to go to 60 meters. The aim for the next dive would be to go to 80 meters. We had one week of break before our last two dives. And for the first dive, it was planned to go down to 80 meters. And for the second dive, simply to have some fun, not caring about reaching any targets for the certification or making any exercises. And we were diving in Malpeak and there's an underwater monument called the Crosses of Malpeak. And it was really, really exciting going down there. It's basically uh, 40 crosses that were built for the deaths from a Portuguese missionary together with his 39 Jesuit companions that were killed by pirates in the 16th century. The night before the dive I had a very lovely donor, but it seems that I did enjoy the donor much more than my body did. And very soon after I ate it, I got stomach pain. To get a paired with a bad night of sleep, I felt the next morning pretty off. And also I was pretty nervous for the dive because I had to reach the 80 meters. I was down already at 60 meters before, but this 80 meters sort of felt like a magical mark. And also it's an important mark in order to get the certification. And I really wanted to get it done. During that day, the weather was also pretty bad and the visibility underwater was not very great either. Eventually we descended and at one point I had the feeling I don't get enough air through my regulator. I think my dive body and also my instructor something is not right and that we make an ascent. On the surface I realized that it was actually just panic and I got really angry and also disappointed at myself. After speaking with my instructor it made me feel a bit better because she said she shared some stories about other more experienced divers also struggling with some anxiety or with some panic. Nevertheless, I was really disappointed and I also decided to call it a day to reschedule the last dives because, dive because I wanted to be in a perfect condition physically and mentally to really do this dive. After a few days of break, it was finally time to make the last dive. And I need to say I was really, really nervous because I really wanted to get down to 18 meters and also get my certification. And I'm a person, if I have said something into my head, I really push a lot for it. And I enjoyed every single dive, so I simply could not accept that shortly before 18 meters, I would get panicked. My day started as usual. I woke up, took the bus to the dive center, and from there we drove all together to the dive spot, changed, planned the dive, took care of our equipment and eventually headed for the water. And latest there, I was really, really anxious and also nervous because I was afraid having the same feeling again. We started eventually to the descent. At the beginning, the visibility was really bad. I didn't see anything basically, but after eight meters, the visibility was really great. And I immediately was back in this feeling that had all the other dives as well. 
I felt really relaxed. I saw all sorts of marine life. And yeah, we were diving. I was concentrating on my dive body. I was checking the air, concentrated on breathing. And slowly and slowly we got deeper and deeper. I saw all sorts of fishes from trumpet fish to sea stars to all sorts of colorful fishes. And it was really, really nice. Eventually we were in 18 meters and I managed it. It was no problem gave me a lot of pleasure, a lot of really good feeling, and I was really happy. During the rest of the dive, I didn't manage to see the crosses, but I saw something probably even better. I saw a stingray gliding through the water. Let us sing a song from a fable, a fireside song. Sing if we're able, let us sing a gift from forever, lost in time and heard as a treasure, as a treasure. Reaching the 18 meters meant there's only one thing left in order to get the open water diver certification, which is a written test. After the dive, we packed our stuff and drove with our instructors to a nearby coffee where then eventually would make the test. I started to become a little bit nervous. I guess it's the usual nervousness that I have before making an exam, but the test eventually was super easy. It was a simple multiple choice test and I managed to answer almost all questions without any problem and correctly, which makes me now a certified open water diver. And I can't actually wait to go back into the water. I made the course in total with seven dives, which is one more course, uh, which is one more dive than required. But I can't wait to dive more, get more routine, spend more time underwater. And I also interrogated my instructors and asked thousands of questions. And with that, I decided now to also get a bit better skill-wise. I want to make some more courses, for example, for better buoyancy, but also safety procedures and emergencies. And with that, I also got a new long-term goal. I want to become dive master, which is a higher certification, and maybe even work a few months into in a dive center, and who knows, in the future, maybe even become a dive instructor. For me, diving is way better than I actually expected. It is a really amazing new world that I discovered and I really, really felt in love with it and I want to dive more, get more practice and spend more time underwater. Also, I want to get better with making videos underwater because I want to share this amazing world with all of you. That was my journey of becoming an open water diver. Really big thanks to the Punkfish Diving School. It was an amazing experience. It was tons of fun. And as I said before, it was not only making a certification, but also somehow making new friends. I also hope you really enjoyed this video and it was helpful for you. If it was and if you did, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and make approaches like this possible. And I'm a few more weeks here in the Canary Islands and we still have the big boy open Mount Tede so stay tuned for that and see you next week for a new adventure.